Hello Truth Seekers, welcome. My name is Keisha. In this requested video, I will summarize 10 years of Sean P. D. D. Combs' many transgressions and evil deeds. You can call me Mrs. Judgment now. <laughs> now, I usually don't like talking too severely about my people, but considering the extent of these allegations, I think it's time. Please have your snacks and drinks because this will be a long, long video, folks. Let's talk. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. As most of you should know, Sean Combs is in so much trouble. But do we know the extent of his trouble? Upon me doing a research on Sean Combs, I come to learn that this man has his hands in many things. The more I researched, the more I realized this man is so dangerous. He makes the devil, well, the exaggerated biblical version of the devil anyway, look soft and less devious. Oh yes. It makes you wonder how he could do all this under the radar and never get caught. You would think he's the head of a mob or involved in a cult or something. With that said, let's start with the death of Tupac on September 13th, 1996. Well, around the time, there was an East Side and West Side battle. Now, Shakur's bodyguard, Frank Alexander, stated that when he was about to ride with Shakur in Knight's car, he asked him to drive Jones's car instead in case they need additional vehicles from Club 662 back to their hotel, you know, for girls, you know, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Man, Shakur was wild. Okay, Alexander reported in his documentary, Before I Wake, that shortly after the assault, one of the convoy's cars followed the assailant, but he never heard from the occupants. Yaki Gaddafi was riding in a car behind Shakur with bodyguards at the time of the shooting and along with the members of Death Row Entourage, who refused to cooperate with police. Now, despite... Knight's injuries, this is Suge Knight injuries, and his vehicle having a flat tire. He was able to drive Shakur and himself a mile from the site to Las Vegas Boulevard and Harmon Avenue. The bike patrol again pulled over them, who alerted paramedics at the time through their radio. After arriving on the scene, police and paramedics took Knight and Shakur to the University Medical Center of Southern Nevada. They were both pulled over just a short distance from the MGM Grand where they even had begun. Now, Gobi Rahimi, a death row music video producer who visited Shakur at the hospital, later reported that he received news from a death row marketing employee that the shooters had called the record label and threatened Shakur. Now, Gobi told Las Vegas police, who said they claimed to be understaffed, no attackers came to the hospital, by the way. Other reports said Shakur said he was dying while being carried into the emergency room. Now at the hospital, Shakur was heavily sedated and was placed on life support machines and was ultimately put under a medically induced coma after reportedly trying to get out of bed. Yes, visitors reported this and it was also reported in Jada's book. Now Tupac was recovering okay. So why did they put him in a medically induced coma? It seems Jones visited him and regained and he had regained consciousness when she played Don McLean's Vincent on the CD player next to his bed. Now according to Jones, which Shakur moaned and his eyes were filled with mucus and it was very swollen. Jones told Shakur that she loved him. Now Knight, however, was released from the hospital the following day of the shooting on September eighth, but did not speak until September eleventh. He told officers he heard something but saw nothing the night of the shooting. A spokesman for the officer said Knight's statement did nothing to help the investigation. Officers at the time of Shakur's hospitalization reported having no leads. Sergeant Kevin Manning and during the week, the officers didn't receive a whole lot of, you know, stuff in 2014. A police officer who claimed he witnessed Shakur's last moment said Shakur refused to state who shot him. And he claimed that when he asked Shakur if he saw the person or person who shot him, he said Shakur responded by saying F you to the officer for his last words. 
Now, paramedics and other officers present at the scene did not report hearing Shakur say those words, nor did Knight or Alexander, who were also present at the time. Now, Rahimi and members of Shakur's group outlaws guarded Shakur while he stayed at the hospital due to their fear that, that whoever shot Shakur was going to finish him off. Now, Rahimi mentioned the possibility that outlaws brought weapons with them. So, while in the critical care unit on the afternoon on Friday, September 13, 1996, Shakur died of respiratory failure that led to cardiac arrest after the removal of his right lung. Now, doctors attempted to revive him, but could not stop the hemorrhaging, they claimed. Now, his mother, Afini, made the decision to seize medical treatment, who was pronounced dead at the time of 403. Now, I'm a little curious. They said he was shot in the lung and all this stuff, so that was brutal, but he seemed to have been fine because he was getting out of bed. I'm starting to wonder if that being shot in the lung was an added thing, and they removed his lung because they probably needed someone who needed a lung transplant. I'm just saying, I mean, organ um, dealing and things of that nature and harvesting was definitely going on back then, and I wonder if they lied about that whole thing. I mean, this thing is starting to sound like organ harvesting to me, but I could be wrong. You see, it was reported that allegedly Combs hired the South Side Compton Crips, who were also his protection, to kill Tupac. He allegedly put out a $1 million bounty on a death row chain as a memento. Yes. Uh -huh. Kefi D confirmed the situation, stating that Combs feared Shug Knight and Tupac Shakur. And he told Kefi D that they needed to be handled. After the murder of Shakur, Combs paid out the money, but it was received by Eric Von Zip instead of the South Side Compton Crips. Oh, yes. Nope. I don't know what happened to it after that. You see, Eric was part owner of the Black Rock music label, who also had Aaliyah on his roster before she tragically died in an airplane accident in 2001, and who was also connected to Combs. Yeah, everything seems to lead back to Combs. Take a look at these clips. Generally speaking, Keefe D, whose real name is Dwayne Davis, is a member of the Southside Compton Crips gang, which was involved in drug dealing. In the early 90s, he got to know a gangster called Eric Von Zip Martin, who was from the East Coast. People in his circle just called him Zip. Actually, it was Zip himself who introduced him to Sean Puffy Combs. Zip and Puffy were very close friends at that time. For Keefe D, Puffy was just a regular guy who was just starting out with his business. However, nowadays he hates him and genuinely regrets ever meeting the guy he calls a bastard. After meeting for the first time, Puffy and Keefy D reconnected with one another after a couple of months regarding renting a car for the artist Usher for the music video Can You Get With It. Puff paid Keefy $2,400 for the car. In the summer of 95, Zip came through the neighborhood and invited Keefe D to a party hosted by Puff, calling it the Beat Summer Jam. Suge Knight was at the party, and according to Keefe's opinion, Suge was already jealous of Puffy because of how well things were going for him at the time. Suge asked him where he knows them from, and he said, just like everyone else, from drug dealing. After that, the most epic Source Awards event took place, where Suge said, Any artist out there want to be an artist, they want to stay a star, they don't want to, they won't have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, come to Jeff Rock. These words completely destroyed the friendly relationship between Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records. However, the most intense shit happened on the 23rd of September, 1995, at a party in Atlanta between the two enemy labels. Suge Knight confronted Puff Daddy and used physical power against him. Keith Murray said that Puff received a powerful slap from Shug. And then Shug was, Shug was like, yo, you all right? And Puffy was there. And then all of a sudden I saw Shug. Pow! Smack the dog shit out of Puffy. And here is Reggie Wright Jr. saying that it wasn't that dramatic. But he did grab him by his collar and was blaming Puffy that night. And anyway, this fight led to the murder of Suge Knight's close friend, Big Jake. Up. You said that you seen him with a check for a million after Tupac got killed. What's the deal behind that, man? I don't know of any truth about that whole situation. You understand? If Puff would have gave Von Zip a check for a million dollars, that's traceable. Jimmy Hitchman gave him a check 
for a million dollars for Black Ground Records. Now, what I said was, is this. I didn't know of Zip having a record label. Why did they give him a check for the company? How long was the company put in existence that he sold? And was it worth a million dollars? That's what I would do as an investigator. Then I'll go to the people who wrote the check and ask them, why did you write a check to Zip for his company for a million dollars when it was only worth 3500 <laughs> I'm just I'm just messing with you, but you understand what I'm saying? Well, Zip was a, a hustler. You understand what I'm saying? And I said it a thousand times, he could talk a water out of well. I mean, a well out of water. You know what I mean? He could talk a well out of water. It has been reported that Sean Combs had also orchestrated Biggie Small's death because he was going to leave the Bad Boys label and start his own, especially after Biggie heard about Tupac's death. And he was also in dispute with Combs about his money. He was staying in some loft or brownstone of some kind and Combs had boats, yachts, and mansions and more all over America. It was allegedly told that Combs heard about this and ordered Biggie's death because he was sick of Biggie and that beef. And we all know Combs has a bad temper and he thinks he's invincible. So far he has, man. Oh, don't forget that Combs owned Biggie's entire catalog. He was worth more dead than alive. Who idea was it for Biggie to lead a vibe party in an SUV with the Life Out the Dust stickers on the hubcaps? Well, I don't know if Big came over to Andre Harrell with that on his car, but Puff didn't have it on his car. You understand that? So only one that has an opportunity and only one that could have done that was somebody for the street team. Do you understand that? And they all put up to do certain things. So somebody was put up to do that because they didn't put it on Puff Car. It was somebody in our crew that wanted them to know that Big was in that vehicle because somebody wanted to know, yo, if y'all gonna get big, he go to the car with the stickers on it. Cause you gotta understand this, man. Puff and Big wasn't as close as niggas would you would think they were. Puff robbing Big, and Big was robbing Puff. Somebody was told to put those stickers on the car. They wouldn't have done it. Don't nobody do nothing unless they was told to do it. To 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 put those stickers on the car on the wheels. And the other car didn't have it on it? It don't make sense, bro. Biggie's dead because Pac lied. You know what I'm saying? If he doesn't lie, we don't have an East Coast, West Coast beef. We don't have, like, he, he's dead because he lied. Give me the lie. He said that Biggie set him up. You know Biggie didn't set you up. You know he didn't set you up. You know that he didn't know you was coming to the studio. Mm -hmm. You know that. Why would you say that? You know you're 1,000% sure. Why would you say that? That is the reason why they took our man from us. Because one lie. You think it was a lie or a misunderstanding? No, it was a lie. And he knew, he knew that, he knew he knew it had nothing to do with Biggie, 1,000%. Mm. Why do you think he said that? Because he didn't want to say what really happened. Mm. Mm. How about that? There's no... Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse is very valuable. So then what the fuck happened to the commission? What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. 
He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy. And then starting his own company. Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he can live. It supported all of Bad Boy. That's real, yo. The more money you make, the more problems you get. So what can we deduce from all of this? Well, Tupac was gaining much momentum and wasn't afraid to call out many people. He was also very intelligent and talented. Not to mention Biggie also started to see the truth and wanted to part ways with the evil Combs. You see, you have two brothers who were on the verge of separating from their labels, allegedly, and they both ended up dead. You make the call. However, I'm not done yet. I need to get deep. <laughs> People say that Combs may have something to do with the death of the Uptown record executive Andre Harrell, who died in 2020 during the early stages of COVID season. He was reported to have had some heart problems, the same health issues Jamie Foxx had before his hospitalization. Can we allegedly say that someone may have had a slick way to silence or kill his enemies? I don't know. I mean, look at the evidence though. Dwight Harrington Myers, a.k.a. Heavy D, died of pneumonia in 2011. An autopsy report released on December 27, 2011, stated that the cause of death was a pulmonary embolism, a.k.a. PE, caused by a blood clot in the leg. He had also suffered from heart disease. The blood clot that resulted in the PE was most likely formed during an extended airplane ride. Heavy D had recently returned from a trip to Cardiff, Wales, in the United Kingdom, where he performed at a Michael Jackson tribute concert. In other words, they don't know. And I'm not sure about this whole blood clot crap. I mean, pilots don't get these cockamamie clots. Beyonce always flies, and we have yet to hear her getting cockamamie blood clots. I just don't believe that. I mean, just no. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'll be sure. Almost died in 2022. It seems that back in 2020, he posted a video documenting the removal of tubes from his abdomen. He also provided a photo of his hospital stay along with a message to his fans and supporters. Hear what it says verbatim. You know, I'm not going to read all that. Just screenshot that and then you guys can read that later. Now, rumor was he was on the verge of making a documentary about his life. There isn't any evidence of him ever doing that. I don't even remember seeing a video of him doing it or in a headline. So this is just a rumor. But that's but they're claiming that what was happening prior to his um, hospitalization. Now, Kim Porter's death, who died on November 15, 2018, from lobar pneumonia, which is a form of pneumonia characterized by inflammation within the intraalveolar space, resulting in consolidation that affects a large and continuous area of the lobe of a lung. However, there were rumors of her being poisoned well, she was going to make a tell-all book about her life. I'm going to be honest. I researched this and it was confirmed that Kim wasn't making a tell-all book about her life. And, you know, I'm just going to spill all the martini. Okay. Why would she want to spill all of that anyway about her life? Why would she want to sabotage the hand that fed her? I mean, Combs is paying her a nice little hefty little amount, I'm just saying. And they had a great understanding, a nice little arrangement going on there. It was said she was writing a parenting book, How to Raise Hollywood Children. So she wasn't making a tell-all book spilling all the tea. So I don't know who came up with that rumor. So we still need to ask the question, though. Was she poisoned? And if so, who poisoned her? Who killed her? You know, we need to find out if that rumor is true. Then it's Jamie Foxx. We all heard Jamie Foxx spilling martini about Combs before his hospitalization in April of 2023. He came back a different person on May 12th amid conflicting reports about the nature of his condition, including rumors that he was gravely ill. It seems at this time, Kareen, his daughter, said that her father had been out of the hospital for weeks recuperating. He was reportedly treated in physical rehab facility in Chicago that specializes in strokes and brain injuries. Hmm. Then on July 22nd, Fox posted a video clip commenting about his health, saying he had been to hell and back. 
there aren't any reports on what caused these sudden illnesses. I don't think Jamie knows what caused it either. However, there have been several theories. Now, despite the rumors, few people have died on the Uptown label. And they were several years apart, though. The theory of them all revealing anything about Combs is still just a rumor. However, I can say that the executives did die. But again, they were several years apart. Abby Shearer may have alluded to Porter's murder theory and Fox was joking about Combs' crazy parties, but he never got that deep from all the footage that I researched and saw. But did Combs have anything to do with their illnesses? Well, to understand that, we must go deeper, deeper into Combs' history. Yes, we're going very deep. Now we're back to Cassie and Kim Porter. But let's begin in the year of 2013. And these are coming from entertainment lawyers, so these are more factual than anything you may have heard on the internet. Take a look at these clips. We're starting off in January of 2013. This next beauty is a kept woman in every sense of the word. She is the concubine of a rich, arrogant music mogul who lavishes her with gifts and baubles so she won't know her true self-worth. This one-hit wonder has learned to play the submission game to the T. And this is allegedly Cassie and Diddy. In February of 2013, this A-plus list rapper who talks a big game when it comes to women and has had a few high-profile relationships with women has always preferred guys. Fairly open secret. The thing is, he never practiced safe intimacy, and one of his conquests is threatening to sue him, saying the rapper passed on the HIV virus. The rap star has refused to take a test proving that he is negative. And this one is either 50 Cent or P. Diddy, allegedly. In March of 2013, this A-plus list celebrity slash producer slash fake rapper loves women, but he likes them to get freaky with him. One of his regulars was with her girlfriend in an adult toy shop, and she kept saying no to her friend and then finally said, blank, P. Diddy, allegedly, likes them to be like a foot long. I honestly don't know how it fits inside of him. Also in March, this A-list celebrity rapper and mogul and sometimes reality star is not a huge drinker. At clubs, he will drink and he orders a ton of booze, but he is not like Jay-Z who will actually get hammered. There are times, though, that our celebrity does. If you are an 18 to 22-year-old gay male interested in older men and lots of presents, this is your chance. Our celebrity uses his drinking as an excuse to take the night off from being a ladies' man. He heads to a club and finds find some willing guys, and then for the rest of the night they drive around the party bus while our celebrity enjoys getting wild with the guys, with no one to see, and is passing out money and presents and booze, and seemingly at his happiest. When the party is over, he drops them back off at the club and then pretends it all never happened. Just blame it on the booze. In May of 2013, what was supposed to be a great business arrangement went sour really quickly because of some demands this A++ list producer made on this current A++ list celebrity. The, the story of their involvement went to the press and then they had to deny it because she had a problem with the money he was going to pay her for the summer and no problem with the amount of time they were going to spend together. But when he said that he would only go through with everything if they had unprotected intimacy, she she said no, wouldn't budge, he wouldn't budge, she has moved on and already found someone else. And this is allegedly Diddy and Kate Upton. In July of 2013, this A-plus list celebrity rapper caused this male escort he had hired to have to go to the hospital after he was abused so violently during intercourse this past week. Our celebrity made him sign an agreement when he arrived and gave him a huge tip when he left. Hope it covered the hospital bill. And this one is allegedly either Diddy, 50 Cent, Kanye West, or Dr. Dre. In August of 2013, this A-list is everything except for movies. He has been in them, but mostly in cameos. Anyway, he has always dabbled in substances and has been busted and exposed in this spot at least once in a reveal and more than once in the blinds. 
the HGH steroid combo he is currently taking right now is worse than anything he has done before. That smack he gave his B-list celebrity girlfriend last week was because he blamed her for his impotence problems. He wants to look good, but is starting to lash out at everyone. Don't put a weapon in his hand right now. And again, this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie. In September of 2013, this A++ list celebrity and everything else who has had one of the most famous faces in the celebrity world was so messed up on substances this weekend, he was running around telling everyone that they had him confused with his twin brother. The twin brother's name changed periodically over the weekend, but the twin brother also seemed to be way more into men than women. No physical action, but there was a lot of comments and schmexual innuendos and a lot of adjustments that he had to keep doing to himself when he would see an attractive guy. It lasted the entire weekend. And this is allegedly Diddy at Burning Man. And this last one from 2013 is also in September. This a list celebrity and rapper is not a nice guy. When he gets really frustrated, he takes out his anger on the male escorts he buys for a few hours. They know a beating is coming, but they are prepared to sacrifice a few days of bruising for the monster payments they receive. On Tuesday night, though, our celebrity went overboard, and it is going to take about $100,000 to get a guy to shut up about it. And this is allegedly Diddy, Kanye, or 50 Cent. We are in December of 2014. This A-list performer slash producer slash promoter was running around like crazy at a party this week in the warm weather climate. With all the glitz and glamour at the party, you would think he would be in his element, but he was on edge and doing shot after shot and popping pills like crazy until a guy showed up. Our performer, with the unusual names, grabbed the hand of the man and smiled and took him to the corner where he gave him lots of kisses. It was a head turner for everyone. And this is allegedly Diddy in Miami. Also in December, this foreign-born B-list mostly movie actress, who stays B-list by name only, was shocked she managed to get pregnant because doctors told her after she ended a pregnancy a few years ago that she wouldn't be able to have kids. She has not listened to anything by the A-list performer and producer and promoter since. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller and Diddy. In February of 2014, it took almost a decade, but this former A-list singer and celebrity, who is now a B-minus lister, finally paid off her debt to this A-plus list everything. I don't even want to know how much intimacy she had to have or the amount of money and interest she had to pay, but her debt is clear and now she will probably have a hit record. And this is allegedly Ashanti and Diddy. In April of 2014, this A-list everything bought and paid for an escort for his son. The escort was a corn star the son had always liked. The A-lister checked her talent test before he would let her spend the night with his son. And this is allegedly Diddy and his son Christian on his 16th birthday. Also in April, this performer turned mogul, turned group maker, turned whatever it is he does now, was at Coachella this weekend and got into an argument with one of his bodyguards. He told the bodyguard the only way he was going to keep his job was to walk around naked for 30 minutes. The bodyguard did it while everyone looked away uncomfortably. In July of 2014, I don't think it is going to start a rap war or anything, but this B-list singer with the very interesting look used to be the go-to third party for this A-list mogul producer and wannabe singer and reality star, and now she hooks up with this a list rapper when he wants something different than what he usually goes for. And this is allegedly Janelle Monae, Diddy, and Jay-Z. Also in July, this A-list mogul who would really love to be classified on here as an A-list singer or rapper or something requiring talent has a camera crew following him around for a few months because he wants to release a movie about himself and is ticked off that no one has wanted to do so. His girlfriend is getting ticked off because even though it is a documentary, if he doesn't like something she does or says but likes what he did or said, he makes her do it again, many times. He is directing the film. And this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie. 
in October of 2014, for the second time that I can remember in the past two years, this foreign-born B-list mostly movie actress who has some really high name recognition, and not in a good way for the things she has done, hooked up with this A-list mogul slash celebrity slash reality star slash wannabe singer because she needs another cash infusion. She has been working more to pay the bills, but lost all of her money in a side venture, and our mogul has always had a soft spot for her after an incident several years ago. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller. Also in October, this very famous music artist is known as quite a ladies man. That's why we were a little surprised to hear that he has an interesting set of toys at his home, a large collection of toys in every color and shape and size. The reason that this is interesting is not because he uses those toys on his female guests, it's because he has the ladies use them on him. And I can't read the rest of this blind item because TikTok's going to take the video down. So if you want to read it, you can see the text above. Star, who really wants to be a rapper, won't speak out publicly about this new show, but is making sure behind the scenes that people know he is against it. A lot of financing comes from people who consider the show to be hateful and want to make it clear they won't provide any money for any projects to people who support it. And this is allegedly Diddy and Empire, and he forbid his son from appearing on the show. In May of 2015, this A-list mogul who would love to be an A-list singer and rapper sent his long-suffering girlfriend back to her room the other night while he hooked up with some random waitress. Hey, every so often you can change that waitress to waiter. Don't tell anyone. And this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie. In June of 2015, this celebrity is vicious towards anyone who dares to make him or his very entitled child look bad, so he engaged his publicist to contact major media sources with a story that positions him and his child as victims. His goal is to embarrass the school into punishing the employee who dared to stand up to him. If the bully angle doesn't succeed, his next move will to be to throw down the race card. Who's the real bully here? Another one from June, this A-list mogul and rapper wannabe slash celebrity has moved on from his most recent celebrity girlfriend to this Orange is the New Black actress who is also going to be the face of one of the products the mogul sells. And this is allegedly Diddy moving on from Cassie with Dasha Polanco. In July of 2015, he isn't married, but he is in a relationship, and they did hook up when he was married before, so this is familiar ground for this foreign-born B-plus list mostly movie actress and this injured A-list mogul. And this is allegedly Sienna Miller and Diddy, who was not married but in an on-and-off relationship with Kimberly Porter from 1994 to July of 2007, and he had just had knee surgery. In August of 2015, this A-list mogul slash reality star slash wannabe rapper emailed a video this week that he shot sometime last year of him getting serviced by a former model slash celebrity girlfriend slash celebrity wife slash awful actress slash wannabe reality star. Included in the email was the model's sometime boyfriend. And this is allegedly Diddy, Amber Rose, and the sometime boyfriend was Machine Gun Kelly, allegedly. Also in August, this singer was bordering on A-list at one point in her career. Then she started dating this at the time married A-list mogul. Her career went nowhere and while he goes out almost every night, he makes her stay home because he is too insecure for her to go out without him. When they do go out together, he ignores her but does not let her talk to anyone except pre-approved females. And this is allegedly Cassie and Diddy. And he wasn't married to Kim Porter but was with her for 13 years. In September of 2015, this A-list mogul who really wants you to take him seriously as a performer spent the night in a tent this weekend with another man and had his long-suffering girlfriend find another place to sleep. And this is allegedly Diddy and Cassie at Burning Man in Nevada. In October of 2015, she's the first lady of his bad boy empire. He's the magic dragon known to wrestle over a morning bowl of frosted flakes. Just ask Usher. So what do these two blind items share in common? Easy. Our other blind item, Palmer, and I'm not talking about cocoa butter. Think rags. She brings home girls all the time for three ways, and it's one of the reasons why he keeps her around. The drop? He bones all of the young chicks in the industry who his sons have crushes on, and the sick thing about it is, he goes back to tell his sons what he did in bed with the girls that they are lusting over. 
and this is allegedly Diddy, Cassie, and Kiki Palmer. In December of 2015, one of the most unfaithful guys in all of the celebrity world was added again this week. This A-list celebrity slash wannabe rapper slash actor who is a mogul hooked up with another woman while his celebrity girlfriend was out of town. And this is allegedly Cassie while she was filming Honey 3. Also in December, apparently this B-list singer was willing to take years and years of being cheated on by her A-list celebrity slash wannabe rapper slash mogul. She was also willing to be ignored for weeks at a time or banned from attending events so he could hook up with others. What finally caused her to leave was him getting another woman pregnant. It has happened before, but this time he didn't hound the woman until she got rid of the baby like the others. Another one from December, this A-list celebrity slash wannabe rapper slash possible killer slash mogul didn't give his ex even one cent when she left. All those years and she has nothing to show for it except for being a doormat. Meanwhile, he texted her a photo of him giving a $100,000 car to his baby mama because she knows how he likes to, the game to be played. And this is allegedly Cassie, Diddy, and his baby mama, Kim Porter. Another one from December, what better way to make everything look like something it isn't? The offspring of this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper is being used as a cover for multiple people. He is pretending to date an A-list reality star while actually sleeping with the reality star's possible future stepfather. And this is allegedly Diddy, Quincy Brown, his stepson, Kourtney Kardashian, and Corey Gamble. And the last one from December and the last one from 2015 reads, Even to me, this is strange. This A-list mogul slash part-time reality star slash part-time singer and rapper paired off this A-list mostly television actress from a hit network show with a guy that he hooked up with a few months earlier. Apparently, he thought it would be a good match. The actress has no idea about the hookup. And this is allegedly Diddy, Taraji P. Henson, and Kelvin Hayden. We are in January of 2016. Like father, like son. The son of this a plus list mogul slash wannabe rapper is into guys. The dad knows how important it is to hide behind a woman, so is frustrated the son does not have that part of it down. And this is allegedly Diddy and his stepson, Quincy Brown. In February of 2016, police have asked to interview this A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper for the first time in forever about his knowledge of a murder. So far, he has been keeping it out of the press, but won't be able to for much longer. And this is allegedly Diddy and Tupac. In March of 2016, apparently the photos and texts that this former singer turned wallflower has of her A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper boyfriend got her some points and some cash and some respect. She isn't afraid to use them, so the boyfriend caved. And this is allegedly Cassie. In July of 2016, this A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper who has been very quiet as of late is HIV positive. Also in July, if you are a young guy looking to break into the record business and you get introduced to this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper, do not go out for drinks with him unless you are prepared for what he expects from you after the drinks. In October of 2016, a little Molly and some booze made for a very wasted appearance on this talk show for this mogul and wannabe rapper. And this is allegedly Diddy on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Also in October, apparently this A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper should be more careful about who he makes promises to because one of the women he recently slept with is telling everyone how awful he is in bed and that she actually asked the question no guy ever wants to hear, is it in yet? Yep, he is that small. In December of 2016, this one-named singer with an interesting choice of hairstyle for several years has new music ready to be released. Just one problem, it is really, really good. So what is the problem? Her mogul and wannabe rapper boyfriend won't be able to keep her under his thumb if it takes off, so he is blocking the release. And this is allegedly Cassie. And the last one from December and from 2016, don't feel sorry for this one named singer in a relationship with this sometimes one named wannabe rapper mogul. She got tired of being thrown to the side at holidays and actually has a new guy in her life. That mogul is going to be shocked to see her say bye bye in 2017. Oh, and with a nice chunk of change too. And this is also allegedly Cassie. 
Moving on to 2017, we are in February. He would like you to believe he was hurt playing some sport or some other cool reason, but the fact is this A-list mogul wannabe rapper fell down the stairs while high on something that rhymes with placid. In March of 2017, the other night, this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper was inspired to have his 70s theme style party. He wanted it to be like a corn set from that time period. The only thing that was a bit off was he let his girlfriend run solo while he hung out with guys until he directed them in their solo scenes. And this is allegedly Cassie and Diddy. In April of 2017, apparently this A-list reality star is willing to be a temporary beard for the celebrity offspring who, much like his dad, is also in the closet. And this is allegedly Kourtney Kardashian, Quincy Brown, and Diddy. In May of 2017, this one's from the Met Gala, people could not stop whispering and pointing at this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper who weighs almost double what he did back in the day. I blame it on his love of booze. I have the same problem. I drink and then I binge eat. In June of 2017, left unsaid by this musician about his former A-list boss is the way the musicians would have to be covert about groupies who they were going to hook up with because their boss would find out and then swoop in. The boss didn't necessarily care about the women, but wanted to show his employees who was boss and why they had jobs. Just cruel stuff. In July of 2017, this suddenly hot again music producer and record label executive slash owner stole from every single act he's ever produced. He would come up with ridiculous charges and assign each expense a random nine number code, just the code and a charge. If an artist complained, he would give them a hundred page book filled with random codes in no particular order. They would never be able to find the random codes in the hundred page book and give up. In November of 2017, this on the run in a foreign country child abuser who all of you know is selling off the remaining assets of his business to this mogul and wannabe rapper. At this point, the abuser is not selling the one thing which keeps people coming to see him, which is the main source of income. And this is allegedly Joe Francis, Casa Amara, and Diddy. Also in November, one of the older sons of this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper has cost his dad several hundred thousand dollars over the past couple of years because of how violent he gets with women. In December of 2017, at the same party as the one attended by number nine, referring to a different blind item, this B-list actor celebrity offspring showed that he has the addiction gene of one parent and the a-hole gene of the other parent. Wasted and treating his date like crap. Seems about right. And this is allegedly Christian Combs at the 2017 GQ Men of the Year party, Diddy and Kim Porter. And last one for December, end of 2017, don't believe the hype. Yes, this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper is deep in the closet, but he didn't recently come out. I don't think he ever will. People can catch him with all manner of men. He just won't do it. We are in 2018, starting off in March. I hadn't heard of him going before, but it looks like this permanent A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper who really wants to make his own music and not have to glom onto others because they feel obligated, attended this intimacy retreat in Arizona to get his mind right. In April of 2018, this mogul and wannabe singer is facing a cash flow problem for the first time in his career. Someone is willing to help, but our mogul is going to have to go out of the country and do some things to earn it, which will probably never make him want to go back. And this is allegedly Diddy in Dubai. Also in April, in the desert last week, the celebrity girlfriend of this permanent A-list mogul and wannabe singer was forced to watch as he judged yet another one of his favorite male strip shows that involved each of them giving him a lap dance. He then gave $2,500 to the winner out of his pocket. And this is allegedly Cassie and Diddy. In May of 2018, speaking of permanent A-listers, this mogul and wannabe singer is about to be taken down by some former employees who were also reality stars. Look for them to start talking about their horrific experiences when they were alone with him. 
Also in May, speaking of Russian oligarchs, this mogul slash wannabe rapper is in debt to one who spends most of his time in the U.S. Apparently, our mogul is having trouble paying back the money owed and may have to declare bankruptcy in the very near future if things don't improve. And this is allegedly Diddy and Roman Abramovic. In June of 2018, this one's from the BET Awards, the Worst Behavior of the Evening Award goes to this celebrity offspring who was inappropriate with every woman he encountered and seems to feel that when he says his name, women are just supposed to want to be with him instantly. If they don't, he is just awful to them. He treats service personnel horribly and at an after party, purposely dumped a plate on the floor and told the waitress who spurned him earlier to make herself useful. And this is allegedly Diddy's son, Christian Combs. In October of 2018, I wouldn't worry about this one named A- slash B plus list singer. She got a huge payday several years ago when she left and then came back. She was probably also tired of coming in second to guys and tired of having to pretend the half limp tool on substances was giving her pleasure. And this is allegedly Cassie. Also in October, she already got a taste of what her new life will be, having some people over and doing some substances. When you think it was time for some one-on-one -on -one time with your man, he says to join him with the other man he has picked up for the evening. You go in the bedroom and watch as neither shows any interest in you. I wonder if she will last very long with this A-list producer and wannabe rapper. And this is allegedly Diddy and Jocelyn Chu. Another one from October, apparently the new girlfriend really couldn't handle being just an observer of the former A-list producer and wannabe rapper when it came to spending time with men. Now she is on the outs. And again, this is allegedly Diddy and Jocelyn Chu. Still in October, this former yachter slash model is still on shaky ground with the A-list producer and wannabe rapper. Her best friend, who is also a D-list celebrity and yachter, is trying to get her to jump ship, so to speak, and join her in the Caribbean next week for $50,000 a week to meet up with four men. And this is allegedly Jocelyn Chu, Diddy, and Chantel Jeffries. And last one from October, I really think this A-list producer, wannabe rapper, and screwer over of manufactured groups is really scared about the lack of an NDA with that one longtime girlfriend and what exactly she will say. I would worry more about the one you saw for a month who knows way more than she should because you trusted her. And again, this is allegedly Diddy, Cassie, and Jocelyn Chu. In November of 2018, this former member of a reality TV manufactured girl group says that she once almost hooked up with this permanent A-list mogul, but she kind of freaked out when he wanted to watch male gay corn to get aroused. And this is allegedly Aubrey O'Day from Danity Kane. And this last one for 2018 is from December. It didn't take long for this one named former a list singer to find someone after breaking up with the mogul and wannabe rapper. She also managed to find someone who wanted to hook up with her. And this is allegedly Cassie with Alex Fine after her breakup from Diddy. We are in January of 2019. This family, including the A-list mogul and wannabe rapper, are trying to make sure some information about the passing of someone close to the rapper omits a few lines they don't think are really relevant. They are pushing hard because if included, it would lead to a lot of questions. And this is allegedly Kim Porter. Also in January, just like I told you would happen, the family kept out the underlying cause slash contributing factor to the passing of this barely there celebrity formerly partnered with this permanent A-lister. He argued it was for her family. Nope, it was for him because he didn't want to have to answer questions about his own health. And again, this is allegedly Kim Porter and Diddy. In February of 2019, this former adult dancer turned model turned celebrity because of who she was dating, turned bigger celebrity because of who she had a baby with, told her current boyfriend she is on birth control, but she isn't. She admits child support is how she wants to earn her living and is going to have children scattered apart every few years. And this is allegedly Amber Rose, Diddy, and Wiz Khalifa. 
from March of 2019. So let me get this straight. The celebrity offspring was dating a guy for a while and then started hooking up with a permanent A-list rapper until the rapper's wife put her foot down. So now the offspring is hooking up with the first guy's dad, who is an A-list mogul and wannabe rapper. And this is allegedly Lori Harvey hooking up with Diddy's son, Justin, Jay-Z, and then Diddy. In May of 2019, this one named singer who doesn't really seem to sing much longer got offered mid seven figures up front to reunite with her mogul ex just because he can't find someone who he trusts to reveal all of the things he likes in the bedroom and quirks. And this is allegedly Cassie. Also in May, this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper had a partner in closeted crime as they hunted for men to hook up with at a recent party spot. And this is allegedly Diddy and Jermaine Dupree. In June of 2019, with the revelations of serial abuse and forced endings of pregnancies at the hands of this A-list mogul and wannabe rapper, hopefully the one-named singer who doesn't really sing any longer will finally be able to feel free to tell what happened to her back in the day because of the same mogul. I have written about what happened, but it would be nice if she could really show the world what kind of guy he is. And again, this is allegedly Cassie. And the related headline here reads, Diddy's ex says he allegedly beat her and made her end two pregnancies. Also in June, this mogul and wannabe rapper tried to get the foreign-born permanent A-list singer to work with him. She wants no part of any of that. Apparently, things were strange when she hid out there back in the day after that famous photo. Public places are fine, but no working together where they might end up alone. And this is allegedly Diddy and Rihanna, and Rihanna and Chris Brown hid out at Diddy's Star Island mansion back in the day. In July of 2019, waiting for the foreign-born former A-plus list tweener to speak out on his experiences with the one named permanent A-list singer when our foreign-born singer was in his early teens. This probably would have been kept quiet, but the one named singer is talking about his own abuse at the hands of another permanent A-lister when our one named singer was also young. And this is allegedly Justin Bieber being abused by Usher and Usher allegedly being abused by Diddy. And the related headline here reads, Usher details the wild time he had living with Puff Daddy at just 14. Also in July, despite all of the accusations leveled against him in the past few months and a history of the same type of revelations going back decades, MTV has decided to give the mogul another chance at finding young women to victimize and paying him to do so. And this is allegedly Diddy and Making the Band. And last one from July, this is Nicolas Cage level creepy. If it wasn't bad enough that the mogul and wannabe rapper was hooking up with someone who hooked up with one of his sons first, apparently there have been two sons who have hooked up with her. I'm sure it is love with the dad though. And this is allegedly Diddy and Lori Harvey. And the related headline here reads, Lori Harvey branded ultimate city girl after dating Diddy and his son. In July of 2019, I guess things got awkward for this pseudo offspring to be hooking up with the son again while also hooking up with the father. And this is allegedly Lori Harvey, Justin Combs, and Diddy. In September of 2019, if this barely there celebrity offspring of an A slash A minus lister really is pregnant, will a DNA test be able to discern between whether it is the father or son who got her pregnant? And again, this is allegedly Lori Harvey. One more from September, the A-list mogul and wannabe rapper isn't comfortable exposing the things he likes in the bedroom to the offspring girlfriend, so he saves those for his longtime side piece who knows how to fulfill them all. And this is allegedly Diddy and Lori Harvey. In October of 2019, I guess the A-list mogul slash wannabe rapper found out that the celebrity offspring was hooking up with people not as old as the mogul and dumped her. And again, this is allegedly Diddy and Lori Harvey. And this last one from 2019 is in December. From time to time, this A slash A minus list mogul slash wannabe rapper also meddles with the relationship of a different child previously mentioned in this space. By meddling, I mean he asked the girlfriend of his offspring for nude pics and videos. She complies. And this is allegedly Diddy, Brea Hicks, and his son Christian Combs. 
We are in January of 2021. In the past few weeks, I wrote about this one named singer and actor who needs rehab. That being said, the soon-to-be-divorced actor and singer is spilling the good tea right now. It won't be long before we know everything that happened on his trips to the yachting headquarters with the mogul and wannabe rapper and the A-plus list mostly movie actor. And this is allegedly Tyrese Gibson, Dubai, Diddy, and Will Smith. This one is from March of 2021, and it is long, so I will reveal the names as I go, but it is worth it. This one's called Closed. It didn't have a fixed location. It didn't operate on a consistent basis. If a certain group of people were all going to be in town together for more than a few days, they would set things in motion and open the club. It would generally be a house that was rented for a few days prior to their arrival in town and rented through their visit and a few days after to get it cleaned. These were big houses because the people who organized the club had big money. No one is sure who had the original idea for it, but the five male founders were the former A-plus list singer and child corn lover, R. Kelly, the former A-list producer who was married to a permanent A-plus lister, Tommy Mottola, who was married to Mariah Carey, the one named former A-plus list singer, Usher, A- the A-plus list mogul and producer and sometimes performer, Diddy, and the former A-plus list singer who is probably B-list now and comes from a family of singers, Jermaine Jackson. This was a club that was only for same-gender hookups. If you brought a woman with you, that was fine, but she would only be allowed to hook up with women while at the club. Back when Diddy was dating the permanent A-lister, Jennifer Lopez, he brought her and everyone watched her hook up with another woman. Apparently, that was the case for this permanent A-list singer, too, Madonna who was not the guest of any of the founders, most of the young men brought to the club were guys who wanted a singing career and were willing to do anything to get it. This foreign-born A-plus list singer, Justin Bieber, was a frequent hookup partner of number three, Usher, which led to a huge career of the foreign-born singer. As the founders, one through five, have aged and have also become more distant with each other, there has not been a club date in about a decade. Also in March of 2021, as much as they tried and as much editing prowess they possessed, the filmmakers behind a recent documentary about a permanent A-list rapper could not get his mother to say one nice thing about the mogul and wannabe rapper. She thinks he is a part of why her son is unalive. And this is allegedly Biggie, I Got a Story to Tell, The Notorious B.I.G., a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, Valletta Wallace, and Diddy. In April of 2021, this A-list producer and wannabe rapper is having money problems. All of those years of exploiting everyone on his roster, and he doesn't have much left to show for it. Also in April, as soon as his on-again, off-again partner and mother to his kids got sick, this A-list producer took out a massive life insurance policy on her without even telling her. And this is allegedly Kim Porter and Diddy. In September of 2021, this illiterate, barely-there celebrity offspring of a permanent A-plus lister was doing lines of Coca-Cola at a Fashion Week party this weekend. The A-plus lister would not be pleased, but he had Coca-Cola problems for at least a decade. One of his girlfriends, who acted from time to time, who all of you know, would literally whip him when he would do Coca-Cola until he finally stopped. And this is allegedly Diddy, his daughter, Jesse James, and Amber Rose. And this last one from 2021 is in November. This three-name singer who peaked several decades ago is on board with what I have been telling you for the past three years. His ex, who was also the ex of this A-plus list producer and wannabe rapper, was murdered. Hey, it isn't like the producer and wannabe rapper hasn't made those kinds of arrangements before. And this is allegedly Albie Sure, Kim Porter, and Diddy. We are in January of 2022. This A-list producer who has not been producing much slash wannabe rapper slash books cooker was outed yesterday and was described as someone you don't want to spend one-on-one time with. Also in January, this A-list producer slash wannabe rapper was already linked to one notorious singer and R-wordist, and now it turns out he hosted the A-list singer and serial woman beater while he R-worded someone. 
and this is allegedly Diddy, Trey Songs, and Chris Brown. And the related headline reads, Woman alleges Chris Brown R-worded her at Diddy's Miami Yacht Party in 2020. In February of 2022, this one is called The Split. Although people probably don't remember now, it is pretty common knowledge that this A-list singer and actress once split with her significant other on Valentine's Day. People assume it's because her significant other used a weapon and nearly unalived someone. That played a little part, I'm sure, but the real reason is that she showed up unannounced because she wanted to talk about the shooting and found a group intimacy party and substances going on in her significant other's home. Everyone was naked and substances were everywhere. Her significant other was literally hooking up with someone on a chair while smoking a cigar with lines of Coca-Cola next to him. When he saw her, he never even stopped hooking up with the person on top of him. He just kind of waved at her with his cigar holding hand. And this is allegedly Jennifer Lopez and Diddy. And the related headlines read, Puff Daddy Brokenhearted Over Split with Lopez. And Shine opens up and shares rare details on 1999 Diddy nightclub shooting. In April of 2022, putting this music producer and host and reality star and wannabe rapper in charge of a winner's decided in advance show is just asking for trouble. The complaints will roll in. And this is allegedly Diddy and the 2022 Billboard Music Awards. Also in April, will the newly arrested former reality star start sharing information about the producer and wannabe rapper who is also his former boss? And this is allegedly the making the band star Chopper who was arrested for trafficking and Diddy. In May of 2022, it has nothing to do with uncanceling for the producer and wannabe rapper and everything to do with ratings. He wanted the world to know he was in charge. It didn't work. The show has the lowest ratings in history. And this is allegedly Diddy and the 2022 Billboard Awards. Also in May, the producer and host and wannabe rapper once promised to pay someone $100,000 if he was willing to feel an electric shock from a car battery. The person agreed, but was never paid after. In August of 2022, speaking of former child actors, this former A-list child-slash-tween-slash-teen actor had a troubled adult life. He would tell you it is because this A-list producer and wannabe rapper groomed him and passed him down to other adult men. And this is allegedly Orlando Brown and Diddy. In September of 2022, things must be getting bad for this former A-list producer slash reality star slash wannabe rapper if he is grifting with a pastor now. And this is allegedly Diddy and T.D. Jakes. And the related headline reads, Sean Diddy Combs and Bishop T.D. Jakes team up to bring exclusive sermon series to Revolt. And this last one from 2022 is in December. I don't know why anyone is surprised that this A-list producer slash executive slash wannabe rapper was busted doing Coca-Cola on camera. Here is what's interesting though. It was during a time period when he was dating the everything in her mind A-lister. I wonder if there is a video of her from the same time. No one cares that he was doing it, but it would be really damaging the perception she has tried to spin for herself if there was a video of her doing Coca-Cola. And this is allegedly Diddy and Jennifer Lopez. We are in January of 2023. The celebrity offspring can say what she wants about her dating life, but she did date a father and son. And this is allegedly Lori Harvey, Diddy, and Justin Combs. In March of 2023, it would all be smoke and mirrors and a whole lot of debt and a bunch of partners he could never make happy if this producer slash mogul slash wannabe rapper buys the cable network. And this is allegedly Diddy and BET. And the related headline reads, Sean Diddy Combs throws his hat into the ring for BET stake. In September of 2023, this former manufactured singer slash reality star slash yachter is trying to get attention by spilling about intimacy parties, but she never names names because her own secrets she never wants to come out. If she names a name, the world will find out what she did and with whom and how much she was paid. I would love for her to spill. She just has too much to lose in her mind if she does. And this is allegedly Aubrey O'Day. In October of 2023, last time he was arrested for a shooting, this A-list everything, Diddy, 
paid an employee, Shine, to take the fall for him and then paid a whole lot more money when the employee got out of jail and was going to reveal it all. I don't know if our A-lister has enough money to pay someone to take the fall for him this time. And this is allegedly Diddy, Shine, and Keefe D, aka Keith Davis, who was arrested for the murder of Tupac. The convicted former record label owner knows who was behind the murder, the A-lister with the ever-changing name. And this is allegedly Suge Knight, Tupac, and Diddy. And the related headline reads, Suge Knight won't testify against Keefe D, says Tupac shooter isn't who the cops think it is. The half-dollar rapper is complaining about the wannabe A-list rapper's parties, but his parties are exactly the same. Lots of hugging from both the front and back. And this is allegedly 50 Cent and Diddy. And the related headline reads, 50 Cent says he is no longer going to Diddy's parties because he hugs you from the front and the back at the same time. And here is the most recent blind item that we have on Diddy. It's from October 10th of 2023. There are two people alive from the day of the shooting, of Tupac. One of them says the guy that was arrested didn't do the shooting, Keefe D, and shouldn't be in jail. He also said the guy that everyone suspects of the shooting, Orlando Anderson, didn't do it. The very next day, you get the wannabe rapper A-lister, Diddy, who did finance an earlier hit, trying to pretend the whole world is not looking straight at him as the person who financed the successful hit. And again, this is allegedly Tupac, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, Orlando Anderson, and Diddy. And the related headline reads, Rare photos show Tupac murder suspect Dwayne Keefe D. with shooter nephew Orlando Anderson as rapper's brother says there are still questions about conspirators that need answers. And that wraps it up. Those are all of the blind items about Diddy from the past 10 years. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and let me know who you'd like to see a deep dive on next. With all of these theories, we can clearly say that Combs is very disturbed and makes R. Kelly sounds like small potatoes because you never heard R. Kelly forcing anyone to do anything or getting violent. His case seems more of a setup to R. Kelly and padded more than anything. Combs, however, is a monster and from what I'm reading. And what's crazy is all the evidence and witnesses to contest these allegations, prominent people. After reading all of these, crazy freaking stories. I have to have a stiff martini. Give me a moment. <clears throat> okay, now I'm back. How is he getting away with all of this shit? This is crazy as hell. You know what? I'm so done with this. I already believe he and the Carters and no telling who else is behind the blacklisting of my channels and social media accounts. Probably got someone on YouTube staff to do this shit. You know what? May they reap what they sow a lot of karma tenfold over and over until they admit everything they've done to me and many others so mode it fucking be tired of this shit from people who are taking for granted what their people support them with and they do this shit to us while still trying to say they support us like an abusive partner or something let me beat you and use you one day and praise and shower you with gifts the next day too much straddling the damn fence all for the damn love of money and idol tree May the gods and goddesses expose and strip them of those idol trees, money, and gifts. Because this is fucking sick.